Ciao. A pitching wedge to loft it. Oh, the wheels really are coming off. Oh. There they go. What do you think? We got a thing that we're doing. Oh, I'm very excited. So you haven't done this one. I have not. You have not done this. Uh, so I tell this story every week. Uh, sorry, Jeff Gamut here, everybody, wrapping up the week. Listen, we've established the fact that you are Ronin, but uh, we didn't ever tell anybody how they could find you, get in touch with you, stuff like that. You want people following you on Twitter or hitting you up on Twitter or whatever? Sure. People can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jay Gamut. Jay Gamut. J G A M E T. Write the letter J. G-A-M-E-T. Uh, you do also turn up on that. Well, I mean, like you're on this show right now. I don't know if people have heard, but you're also uh, you're turning up on uh, on uh, some of Chuck Joyner's Mac Voices stuff as well, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, Chuck has me on uh, uh, periodically. Okay. And I, I assume he, he brings me back when he's forgotten what he has to deal with. <laughs> and uh, and then I'll do the show, and then he has to wait till he's forgotten what he has to deal with. Yeah. Uh, Points up, by yeah. the way. I feel like Jeffrey Tubin has stolen some of your thunder. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it used to be. It's all fun and games until somebody loses a job. Yeah, or or three. <laughs> Uh, right. So I tell this story every week. I'll try to keep it short. I went on to the app store and I found a daily decision maker app. It's called Daily Decision Wheel, actually. And initially I wasn't going to talk about them, but they keep updating their decision maker app. I mean, like, like seriously, once a week, they'll be like, hey, we heard you wanted this feature. So now we're giving you this feature. It's amazing to me because I can't remember if it was a buck ninety nine or four ninety nine, But honestly, it was like, OK, well, this will be good and nothing is ever going to change about it, but that's going to be fine. They keep updating this app. It's kind of crazy. So Daily Decision Wheel is the name of the app if people want to find it. If you want to play the home version of Wheel of Stuff, what I've done is I have filled the wheel with a bunch of topics, and uh, and I spin the wheel, and I throw the topic to you, Jeff Gamut, and then we have a uh, and we have a little discussion. Going to spin the wheel three times. Are you ready, sir, for the first spin of the Wheel of Stuff? I am so ready. Oh. Well, we might be here a while because that was a hard spin. Oh, no. What is the scariest thing you've ever done? What is the... Oh, wow. The scariest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Now, it could be uh, something that made you nervous or it could be something like, and I walked away alive and I don't know how I did. I mean, there's there's no... You just... What's the scariest thing? If I say, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? Um... I would have to say just off the top of my head, maybe mm-hmm. I could find something else if I if I uh, thought about it longer. But uh, long, long ago, many years ago, mm-hmm. I had a Jeep CJ5 and I was driving home uh, in the middle of winter and I hit a patch of black ice. I live in Colorado. So for people that don't know what black ice is, it's ice that's on the road but it doesn't reflect, so you can't see it's there. Yeah. And when I hit the patch of black ice, uh, uh, four-wheel drive isn't magic, so my Jeep just completely lost traction, and I slid off the road, went up this embankment, went sideways across the embankment, and was still going fast enough that when uh, the embankment ended, my Jeep didn't stop. It just went off into the air, and it's facing nose down, and then went straight down into a drainage ditch. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, of course, it totaled the Jeep, and uh, like even the roll bar was bent crooked Good in grief. this thing, and, and it was still sitting there on on its end. And uh, so I opened the door and climbed out, and uh, I, I I hurt really bad the next day, but I that, walked away from it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, the thing is, because you say it was going fast enough, you got to the end of the embankment. Uh, the black ice isn't just on the road. I mean, ice. I mean, it's obviously, if you've got ice on the road, there's a chance you had ice up there as well, and so. Yes. Just in like the world's most expensive and and quite dangerous sled, I would imagine. That's that's exactly right. But I walked away from it. Yeah. Well. That, well. Yes. And that's good. Are you ready to spin again, sir? Oh, spin again. Yes, please. I can't figure out the physics of this thing. That's the one thing I will say because I actually spun not quite as hard that time, and yet it took longer. You just don't know your own strength. It could be that. Or how to apply it. Um, there is one film that everyone should see, Jeff Gamut. 
in your estimation, there is one film that everyone should see. Uh, you know, and let's allow for ages. I mean, this is not necessarily for somebody who's eight. Like, if you say the unbearable lightness of being, I'm not going to be like, well, I showed it to my six-year-old nephew, and you're a sick, sick man. But assuming that we're talking about, you know, people of age, uh, there is one film that everyone should see. What is it? There's so many. No, but, there's uh, only one. It's right here on the wheel. I know. It's like the Highlander of movies, but it's not Highlander. Uh, <laughs> it's not Highlander 2, is it? Because that's ter- Really? The everyone, Blues Brothers. Really? Everyone needs to see the Blues Brothers. Because <sighs> I got to tell you, I haven't. Okay, well, you need to see it. Okay, that's it's, fine. It's an absolutely wonderful movie. Mm-hmm. They they don't take themselves too seriously, but mm-hmm. they play it so serious through the okay. whole thing. All right, you get to hear some amazing music. Yep, and uh, and uh, many of the stars in the movie are uh, are are well, a lot of them are gone now, sadly. Yeah, uh, but so were top names in in the rhythm and blues music space. And the the story is silly and fun, and um, uh, wasn't wasn't Cab Calloway in that movie? Yes, yeah, and he is fantastic. All right, that's kind of yeah. incredible. Yeah, I was you know it's weird. I was actually thinking it's so weird that you say that because I was thinking earlier today about John Belushi, and I was thinking specifically about like people from Saturday Night Live who are still with us versus people who are no longer with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I can totally picture a. Um, Elwood and the other one, Jake. Jake and Elwood. Jake and Elwood. I can totally picture both of them in that movie. And yet, I don't even want to say again that I've never seen it because I know it's just going to be email after email of, have you seen it yet? Have you seen it now? Have you seen it yet? Here's the one thing I will say. I feel like I have seen it because, you know, pretty much since I was 11, it's been people imitating scenes from that movie. Right. (laughs) I mean, when I say... We're on a mission from God. Yeah, exactly. You know what movie I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ready to do the last spin? Yes. All right. If people are wondering, by the way, why the question uh, favorite mug hasn't come up yet, it's because I took it off the wheel. Oh, I'd I'd be happy to tell you my favorite mug if you want. But it it kept turning up over and over again. That's the thing. So uh, here here is... uh, Interestingly, the, uh, the the last question uh, for the day. Uh, your hero from fiction. Not a real life hero, because that also kept coming up. And while I am honestly interested in who your real life hero is, it seriously came up as a question three weeks in a row. So I blocked that one out this week as well. But I am curious. Um, comic books, movies, TV shows, uh, you know, books, re- like regular, like according to Hoyle Books. Uh, somebody made up who you would consider a hero. That's a very fluid topic for me because okay. oftentimes it depends on what I'm reading at the at the time. Sure. Um, this is awful because I'm suddenly drawing a blank mm-hmm. on uh, on this character's name, which really makes it suddenly less interesting. <laughs> um, but they're awesome. All right. Yes. So uh, there's a, um, a character that Gail Simone, she is a comic book writer, mm-hmm. uh, created in, uh, in one of the Wonder Woman uh, series that she wrote. Okay. And it's this, this little girl, and I want to uh, – it's like – I feel awful. I can't remember her name. It's like Princess Flower or something. Okay. But – it's this uh, like twelve year old girl who who just is sweet and innocent and, and has the purest heart, and she controls flowers, and so she's able to uh, to help people, and uh, and Wonder Woman sees her as this amazingly powerful girl, or uh, and uh, actually admires her and. There, there's like one point where uh, where this girl is saying, you know, I, I have action figures. Of, I have a doll of you. Mm-hmm. And Wonder Woman is saying, I can't wait until I can have a doll of you. Mm. And just this this girl that is uh, is incredibly powerful, yet at the same time has this innocence about her 
and uh, and is so willing to help people, even though uh, it's putting her in danger. She just doesn't even realize she's putting herself in danger. She just simply wants to help people and make their lives better. You know what that reminds me of a tiny bit? Hmm. Um, did you ever read the Opus Christmas book, A Wish for Wings That Work? Wow, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, because that was, the, I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's been out for like 25 years. But basically, Opus writes to uh, Santa, and, and the thing that he wants is wings that actually work, because he's a penguin, you know, and he can't fly. And then uh, Santa ends up crashing someplace, and I think it's like Slay ends up in the water, and it's going in, and Opus really quickly swims out to him and grabs the reins of the uh, of the Slay and pulls him back to shore, which of course he's able to do because he can swim because he's a penguin. And and, a penguin. and Santa looks at him and says, "I you know you wish for wings that work, but I don't see wings here that don't." And seriously, it like, makes me cry <laughs> when I read it. So, yeah, uh, I yeah. forgot about that. And uh, not going to lie, I think there's some dust in the room right now. Yeah, a tiny bit, right? But yeah, uh, yeah I kind of want to get, I kind of want to get uh, the, the 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 princess who you know uh, does the thing that she probably thinks is useless because it's the thing that she can do, and uh, and Opus together because uh, yeah, they they, they have a they have a similar a message. Team. They have a similar yeah. message to me. So yeah. Well, uh, I, I usually make up parting gifts that we have, but I've, I've forgotten to. So uh, I will just say uh, thank you very much, sir, for, uh, for, for joining us this week and for being game uh, when we spin the Wheel of Stuff. It was so much fun. 